this passage is from Susan Reeland, Clara and Mr. Tiffany. The narrator is meeting with her former employer, Louis Comfort Tiffany, an artist whose company later became famous for designing stained glass lampshades. I've come to inquire if you have worked for me, that is, if my performance pleased you before. A deliberate prompt. I didn't want to be hired because of my need or his kindness. I wanted my talent to be the reason he wanted me back. Indeed, was all he offered. What now to fill the suspended moment? His new projects, I asked, his eyebrows leapt up in symmetrical curves. A Byzantine chapel for the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago next year, four times bigger than the Paris Exposition Universal. It will be the greatest assembly of artists since the 15th century. He counted on his fingers and then drummed them on the desk. Only 15 months away, in 1893, the name of Louis Comfort Tiffany will be on the lips of millions. He stood up and swung open his arms wide enough to embrace the whole world. I sensed his open palm somewhere in the air behind the small of my back, ushering me to his massive carved mahogany exhibit table to see his sketches and watercolors. Two round windows, the infancy of Christ and Botticelli's Madonna and Child, will be set off by a dozen scenic side windows. A huge undertaking, how richly fortunate, surely there would be opportunity for me to shine. Practically hopping from side to side, he made a show of slinging down one large watercolor after another onto the Persian carpet, each one a precise fine-edged rendering of what he wanted the window to be. Gracious, you've been on fire, go slower, give me a chance to admire each one. He unrolled the largest watercolor, an eight-foot mosaic behind the altar depicting a pair of peacocks surrounded by grapevines. My breath whistled between my open lips. Above the peacocks facing each other, he had transformed the standard Christian icon of a crown of thorns into a shimmering regal headdress for God the King, the thorns replaced by large glass jewels in true Tiffany style. Astonishing how he could get mere watercolors so deep and saturated, so like lacquer that they vibrated together as surely as chords of a great church pipe organ. Even the names of the hues bore an exotic richness, the peacock's necks in emerald green and sapphire blue, the tail feathers in vermilion, Spanish ochre, Florida gold, the jewels in the crown mandarin yellow and peridot, the background in turquoise and cobalt, or oh, to get my hands on those gorgeous hues, to feel the coolness of the blue glass like solid pieces of the sea, to chip the gigantic jewels for the crown so they would sparkle and send out shafts of light, to forget everything but the glass before me and make of it something resplendent. When I could trust my voice not to show too much eagerness, I said, I see your originality is in good health. Only you would put peacocks in a chapel. Don't you know, he said in a spoof of incredulity, they symbolized eternal life in Byzantine art. Their flesh was thought to be incorruptible. What a lucky find for you, that convenient tidbit of information. He chuckled, so I was on safe ground. He tossed down more drawings a marble and mosaic altar surrounded by mosaic columns and a baptismal font of opaque leaded glass and mosaic. This dome is the lid of the basin in opaque leaded glass. He looked at it with nothing sort of short of love and showed me its size with outstretched arms as though he were hugging the thing. I was struck by a tantalizing idea. Imagine it reduced in size and made of translucent glass instead. Once you figure how to secure the pieces in a dome, that could be the method and the shape of a lampshade, a wraparound window of, say, I looked around the room, peacock feathers. He jerked his head up with a startled expression, the idea dawning on him as if it were his own. Lampshades in leaded glass, he said in wonder, his blue eyes sparkling. Uh, just think where that could go, I whispered. Which choice best describes what happens in the passage? The narrator reflects on how the behavior of another character has changed. The narrator struggles to understand the motivations of another character. The narrator discusses shared professional interests with another character. The narrator recounts the events that led another character to support her project. So this would be C, right? Uh, because it's very clear here that the two have a shared political, uh, shared professional interest in 
um, in glass, in glass painting. And there is also this uh, interest on the part of Clara, the, who I think is the narrator, but may not be, to um, to get work from uh, Mr. Tiffany, right? So that whole, uh, the whole paragraph is about that interest. Um, it's not really about the behavior of Tiffany changing, so it's not A. Um, there's no, as such, discussion of understanding the motivations of Tiffany or Tiffany supporting her project. So it's C. According to the passage, Tiffany looks forward to the upcoming World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago as an opportunity to gain greater popular recognition, sell many decorative objects, collaborate with other famous artists, showcase pieces that have earned critical luckily. So this is A, right? He is looking to gain popular recognition. Um, in 1893, the name of Louis Comfort Tiffany will be on the lips of millions. So he's hoping that this exposition will make him famous. The narrator indicates that Tiffany informs her of his new projects by showing a series of plans for stained glass windows he intends to construct, presenting several finished stained glass windows and describing them in detail, asking her opinion on the watercolor play paintings he plans to exhibit in Chicago, displaying a chart that shows the placement of the artworks he plans to exhibit in Chicago. So this comes from here, right? Um, to see his sketches in watercolors, two round windows, the infancy of Christ and Botticelli's Madonna and Child will be set off by a dozen scenic side windows. Practically hopping from side to side, he made a show of slinging down one large watercolor after another onto the Persian carpet. So he's showing her his watercolors. So, um, but he doesn't really ask for her opinion, does he? Okay. Yeah, so... No, it's not. So it's just, uh, it's just C. He's just asking her opinion of the watercolor paintings that he plans to exhibit. He is not showing her stained glass windows and he's not displaying a chart. Which choice best supports the idea that the narrator recognizes the potential importance of her contribution to Tiffany's business? Okay. 34, 46, 47, 34, 46 to 47, okay, 69 and 79, 69 and 79. So this is about the potential importance of her contribution to Tiffany's business, right? So let's just go to the first. My breath whistled between my open lips. So this is just her looking at the watercolor. So it can't be A. Oh, to get my hands on those gorgeous hues. Again, this is not about her contribution to his business. I was struck by a tantalizing idea and just think where that could go. So this is the right answer, right? Because she thinks that if this idea of the lampshade takes off, it could really be a big business. So it's D. As used in line 38, true most nearly means 38. Okay. Uh, the thorns replaced by large glass jewels in true Tiffany style. Okay. Honest, characteristic, loyal, and factual. So here it would be characteristic, right? Because you're talking about his particular style, the style in which he draws. So that's his true style, his characteristic style, right? It's not honest because it has nothing to do with honesty or loyalty and not factual either. In context, the narrator's reference to a pipe organ mainly serves to line 41. Astonishing how he could get mere watercolors so deep and saturated, so like lacquer that they vibrated together as surely as the chords of a great church pipe organ. Okay, so this is in this is to compare um how uh, Tiffany got the watercolors together uh to work together, right? 
suggests that Tiffany draws inspiration for his artworks from music, reveal her surprise at Tiffany's decision to create watercolor paintings, illustrate her perception of the vividness of the colors used by Tiffany, provide an example of an image Tiffany depicts in one of his watercolors. So this is C, right? Just as the chords of the pipe organ come together, the colors in Tiffany's paintings, they vibrate, they are, they, they are vivid, right? So that is the comparison that the author intends to make. The narrator's remarks in lines 53 to 54 uh, and 58 to 59 are best described as expressing the narrators 53, 54 and 58, 59. Uh, 53, 54 and 58, 59. I see originality is in good health. Only you would put peacocks in a chapel. What a lucky find for you, that convenient tidbit of information. Okay. So, narrator's envious resentment of Tiffany's talents as an artist, good-natured amusement at Tiffany's creative tendencies, long-standing puzzlement at Tiffany's unconventional choices, open admiration for Tiffany's unique vision. So, you can easily eliminate A and C, right? Because they have a sense of either resentment or confusion, which is not true for how the narrator feels. And between B and D, I think B is a better answer because... The, the way the narrator talks to Tiffany in those lines, that indicates a level of comfort, right? There is a, there is a little bit of teasing going on there. So this is good-natured ribbing, right? It's not open admiration. That would be a little too much. In context, the description in line 66 to 68 contributes to the passage's overall characterization of Tiffany mainly by... So let's look at 66 to 68 this right he looked at it with nothing short of love and showed me its size with outstretched arms as though he were hugging the thing okay so this characterizes suggests by suggesting his tendency to exaggerate his own importance conveying his preference for creating large-scale artworks demonstrating the personal warmth he expresses towards others emphasizing the intensity of his excitement about his work so we can easily eliminate C because it's not about the warmth he expresses towards other. He's kind of, I think the uh, the point is that he was, it was, he was showing it with outstretched arms, that painting as though he was hugging it, right? So it's about the painting, not another person. I think I'll go with D, right? Um, so B also is not right because it's not something that... Uh, is brought out, right? The fact that he creates large scale artworks. I think it's about the fact that he really gets excited about his work, which also comes from the earlier conversation that he has with the narrator about the upcoming exhibition. So D definitely is a good answer. I don't think he's exaggerating his own importance, right? It's uh, it's more to do with his his interest in his work and his love for his work. It can most reasonably be inferred from the passage that the narrator's talents include an ability to devise imaginative names for the colors of the glass she works with, enhance an existing idea by improvising technical innovations for artworks, provide authoritative critiques of classical artworks, create detailed sketches on which larger artworks are based. So I think it would be B because towards the end, she does kind of suggest how he can uh, improve on his idea by making lampshades, but this let's confirm this. So 34, 38, 42, 44, 34 to 38, 42 to 44. Okay. 61, 63, 69, 72. 61 to 63 and 69 to 70, uh, 72, right? Okay, so my breath whistled between my open lips above the peacocks facing each other. He had transformed the standard Christian icon of a crown of thorns into a shimmering regal headdress. 
So this is just the narrator admiring Tiffany's work. So it doesn't really talk about her contribution. The peacocks, necks in emerald green and sapphire blue, the tail feathers in vermilion. So again, this is just a description of the colors. He toss down more drawings, a marble and mosaic altar surrounded by mosaic columns and a baptismal font. I was struck by a tantalizing idea. I imagine it reduced in size and made of translucent glass instead. Once you figure how to secure the pieces, that could be the method and shape of a lampshade. So this is the right answer because here, she actually comes up uh, with a, you know, she has enhanced what Tiffany was doing by improvising technical innovations and coming up with the idea of a lampshade, right? So let me just quickly look at A. No, it's not about devising names for colors. It's She's not providing authoritative critiques and there is no detailed sketching. So it's B. Okay. 